Uh, it was a week of glorious television, with the project really putting their big fat lefty foot in it over the voice. The 1980s variety show singing sensation Kamal had announced that he was going to vote yes, after originally saying he was going to vote no. Everyone was over the moon, hoping that millions of Kamal fans would also switch their votes as the yes campaign continued to tank to new levels in the polls. Especially our Prime Minister, who could hardly contain himself and was so excited by Kamal's backflip that he decided to coin a new word. Something I get great heart from is the decision of Kamal. A very courageous decision. He's someone who came out and said no and went away, spoke to people, read what it was about, read the question and decided that he would come out and declare his support for yes and to say, why would anyone oppose this? So we have now a, a new term that we've coined today, Kamal Mentum, in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> well, he was right. Kamal had changed his mind. Only problem is he then changed it back again to no, announcing his latest change of heart live on the wokest of woke TV, Channel 10's lefty project show on Sunday night. The latest Redbridge poll has the support for The Voice down a point to 38%. It also found only 15% of Aussies now listing The Voice in their top five priorities for the government. Cost of living, housing affordability, jobs and the economy all ranking higher. Meanwhile, Aussie icon Kamal has declared a backflip. Unbelievable. After publicly backing the no vote, he met with First Nations community leaders and has now decided he'll vote yes. I came here believing that the no was a strong possibility. They've convinced me otherwise. And I'm delighted that I'm, I have changed my no to yes. Kamal, it's great to see you. Where are you standing at the moment? Well, uh, it started with a flippant no about 10 days ago. Uh, and then uh, a few days later, uh, I was persuaded to believe uh, uh, yes would be the way to go. And I, when I eventually got home, uh, 20, 48 hours later, I had reason to believe that I'd, I might have made a mistake. In fact, I did make a mistake. And knowing as much about it as I do know now than I did before, it is definitely yes for it. And Ah, oh, look at those big smiles. Could the little project people be any happier? They're just bursting with woke pride in the 89-year-old. But maybe just a bit too soon, because Kamal hadn't finished his story. But I don't think you really need a, a, a voice. They already have a voice. So hang on, Kamal, you were originally saying no, and then you went to yes. So I, are you back on no? Yeah, because no, because it, no is an informed decision. Uh, the yes, the first no was an uninformed decision, and then a yes was a semi-informed decision. And now, 100%, I am well and truly uh, committed to saying no. Oh no! Heads are exploding all over the project set. Somebody get a mop and clean this mess up. What, hang on. So what? What changed your mind? The fact, you know, the fact is that the. This whole thing, if, it, if this comes to be, it becomes based on race. The Aboriginals have, or the Indigenous Torres Strait Island people already have a voice. It's a purely uh, an, an opportunity of making an effort to find out what they want to say and what should be done for them. And uh, at the moment, it's $40 billion a year. $40 billion a year. Yep. Now, here's where it gets really good. Poor young Hamish nearly pops a blood vessel. $40 billion a year. What, what to is? The, for, to the Indigenous people. Where is the money going to? What Hang are on. they doing where, with it? We're sorry, where are you getting that figure from, Kamal? A bigger pun? Where does that figure come from? The $40 billion. Yeah. Where, wh I, I saw it and, you know, somebody told me, maybe, I, I think I'm making it up. A nice one, Hamish. Do the little befuddled face-to-camera look. Uh, where, where are you getting that from, Kamal? Uh, where are you getting that from? And pick on your guest, your 89-year-old guest. Explain yourself, young fella. Uh, it's just you're saying that now your decision is, is fully informed. I'm just, I think we're all interested to understand not, no, no, not, not how fully, you've landed no, on this position. No, 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 not fully informed. As informed as I could be in 48 hours. They're spending $40 billion. 
for how are they spending that money? Kamal, obviously grateful to have you on. I feel we should probably just fact check the 40 billion figure because you've used it a few times and I know a lot of people are listening to you. I think there was a claim made by Tony Abbott some years ago that the National Indigenous Australians Agency spent $30 billion a year. Um, that's been fact checked as false. The government agency says it's never administered funding of $30 billion a year on Indigenous programs. Its total budget for 2022 and 23 was $4.5 billion. So I think it's probably just right, given that we are in a referendum and people are making up our mind, their minds, uh, that we, we just get that right. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Hamish. So good of you to clear that up. You're just such a sincere, nice guy doing that for, for all us little dumb people. Just one tiny problem with it, mate. You are completely and absolutely wrong. Your fact check seems to be lacking in um, facts. Sorry. Maybe don't rely on the RMIT fact lab, those little people running around in white coats with truth serum in test tubes down at RMIT. The RMIT fact lab are so bad at fact checking that they even got dumped by left wing social media. Here are the actual facts for you. The 40 billion figure did not come from a claim made by Tony Abbott about the National Indigenous Australia Agency, Hamish. You condescending, patronising, badly researched. I'll stop there or I'll get sued. This is Australia, so I'm not allowed to say what I really think about Hamish and his journalism. And he's one of the better ones on that show. The $40 billion figure comes from a much more detailed report published by the Australian Government's Productivity Commission. It was the last serious, heavily and carefully researched attempt to put an actual figure on how much money is being spent on Aboriginal people in Australia. It's something so important you should know it off by heart, considering how much influence you have over the way young Australians vote, Hamish. You and the entire project team and everyone at CBS Network 10. The Productivity Commission report came out in 2017. It used figures from the 2015-2016 financial year and it showed that total federal government spending that year was $556 billion. On Indigenous Aussies, it was $33 billion, and on non-Indigenous Australians, it was the rest, $523 billion. That's all spending for regular government services we all get and special services for Indigenous people. The $33 billion spent on Indigenous people was made up of $27 billion, on the things all, all Aussies get, and six billion special indigenous programs. So is this fair? Well, we need to look at it on a per head basis, first of all. How many indigenous people were there in 2015, 2016? The Australian Bureau of Statistics put the number at 730,000, and the rest of Australia at 23.4 million people. So if you do the math, our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people got $45,000 of all federal government spending each. And the rest of us got $22,000 each. That's more than double. I repeat, more than double the amount of government spending goes to people who identify as Indigenous on average than goes to non-Indigenous Aussies on average. Now to be fair, some of this is because of remote location living and some of it is because of the extra special services. And some of it is because Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are more in need of welfare support because of disadvantage. But the reality is, it's still more than double. It's a lot of extra care and support from Aussie taxpayers. What this means is, and I hope you're listening, MC Hammer, we are a kind nation that looks after its Indigenous people. And Aussies are clearly not systemically racist. We spend twice the amount on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people than we spend on anyone else. Okay, so that's $33 billion. Where does this $40 billion figure come from that Kamal used that Hamish was so keen to clear up for us all? Well, this is where it gets really shocking. The Bureau of Statistics says the ATSI popula population is now in 2023, around 950,000. 
That's a very big jump, which many have said is because more people are identifying as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander. If we adjust this 33 billion number for this 30% population increase, and we adjust for inflation from 2015 to 2023, which was 28.5% in total, we have the number $55 billion. Okay, now, just before the RMIT Fact Lab people start screaming, ah, oh, it's not 55 billion, they've misrepresented it. Let's say maybe federal spending is down and they're not spending as much as in 2015. Even so, Kamal's 40 billion number was very, very conservative as an estimate. So here's what needs to happen. The project, and specifically Hamish MacDonald, need to make a formal apology on Sunday night to Kamal. They also need to apologise to their viewers for wildly misinforming them. And they need to show these facts and make a correction. I'll happily rock up to South Yarra and come on the show and explain it all. I'll even pay for the flight from Brisbane to Melbourne myself. You guys have to stop misinforming people, particularly Australia's young people. It's just plain wrong. And as for the RMIT Fact Lab, well, I'll happily duck into the city and explain it to them too. But here's the really big thing I want you to take away from all this, folks. After this referendum fails, and it, it will if we all go out and vote, we will be told that we need misinformation and disinformation laws and more fact checkers. And this will be used to justify the introduction of the government's next horrible idea, the misinformation and disinformation bill. This is just more proof that we cannot trust the establishment media and the government to tell us the truth. And we must never make them the ministry of truth, arbiters and gatekeepers of the truth ever.